Black holes have gripped the imagination of a young generation of theorists like these at Cambridge University. As ideas are stretched to the limit, the acknowledged leader in black hole theory is Stephen Hawking. He and another British theorist, Roger Penrose, laid down the basic principles ten years ago. They said the black hole would possess at its center an even stranger object. All the matter of a star collapsed to a geometric point, a singularity where gravity crushes particles out of existence. Oh, you would like me to draw a cylinder on the board, fine. A grave physical handicap makes Stephen Hawking's work all the more remarkable. For 13 years since his student days, he's fought a wasting disease of nerve and muscle. When his wife Jane married him, he wasn't expected to live very long. Now they've two children, Lucy and Robert. No self-pity for Hawking. With a physical handicap, he says, you can't afford any psychological ones. And although the gentle gravity of the planet Earth confines him to a wheelchair, in his mind, he masters the overwhelming gravity of a black hole. The Big Bang is like a black hole explosion, but on a much larger scale. By finding out how a black hole creates matter, we may discover how the Big Bang created all the matter in the universe. The singularity of the Big Bang seems to be a frontier beyond which we cannot go. Yet we can't help asking what lies beyond the Big Bang. Why does the universe exist at all? My son Robert is always asking questions. Why this? Why that? Every child does. It's what raises us from being cavemen. On one view, we are just weak, feeble creatures at the mercy of the forces of nature. When we discover the laws which govern these forces, we rise above them and become masters of the universe. I become a master of the universe.